because I always think of it in terms of my teaching, but it's because I've been there for so long now, I don't think, it's hard to think of like earlier back. Like when did I first engage with this? Because to me, my, my, my things are always like my greatest hooks with antiquity are always either the poetry or the politics. That's always what I get to. So, because I love poetry, I've always like loved to read poetry of any language, in any language. I love it. So for me, that was like always a hook. And to me, that always spoke to me in some way, even if they were talking about something I didn't understand, right? So like, for example, Catullus and like some of his like more um, vitriolic poems, right? In terms of like, I don't like you and you know, rotten hell sort of thing. It's like this idea, it's like, I mean, that was very alien to me. I didn't understand that and I didn't really think that way. So I was like, that I didn't get. And even like the love emotion, I didn't understand either. It's like, you're in high school, well, it's like whatever you think of what love means is probably not what it really means. But you can connect to the emotion like we talked about earlier, right? So I think in some ways like th that's relatable. So I've always like responded to the poetry and the art of it, just sort of like as a craft. I mean, they're artists, right? I don't think we always think about people who write literature being artists, but I think they are. Right, they're crafting something, right? Even if they're writing quote unquote history, which is supposed to be factual, they're crafting it, right? They're crafting a narrative that maybe isn't all that factual, even if there's actual facts in it, right? In that sense, like I've always just responded to art and craft in that, in that way, and in the political side. So looking at politics, I think younger, I didn't understand that as much. I think as I started to teach, was an adult for more years, I think, than I was a teenager, right? And was faced with incredible circumstances in your own contemporary environment. Those political resonances become really acute. And I think for me, like one thing from more recent times that I've always really been struck by, I remember first reading it, and I remember thinking, hmm, that's really interesting. I'm not quite sure what that means, but now I really do. And it's when Thucydides is talking about, I think it's Corsaira, right, and the revolt there, and the sort of civil strife he talks about how there was an abuse of language, right? Like literally an abuse of vocabulary. Words started to mean different things, right? People started to say one thing and it had meant one aspect, it had meant X, and now it means Y suddenly, right? And I think in times of crisis, how language is manipulated, right, as rhetoric. Um, and I, I think that that is so incredibly powerful. And I remember, again, first reading that and thinking, hmm, okay, like, I think I know what he means, but and I know it's important, I know he's saying something really important here, but not really being able to get to it. And I think living through contemporary politics now uh, has really brought that home for how people, you know, manipulate words to mean things, right? They're very powerful. And I think that's what he's getting at there, right? Is the idea that like words have meaning, they're powerful and what you say matters. Uh, and like that's all very, very relevant and is an incredible insight, right? Into, into conflict and discourse.